Okay, here we're going to learn about the plant hormone called auxin. This is what it looks like on the chemical structure. Uh, I call it the ball and stick model here, but we're going to learn about how it influences and impacts plants. So starting first, auxin can move through the plant from the site of initial production. It moves through the process of active transport. Now it can diffuse. This is a hormone that can diffuse through plant cells, but it only diffuses at a rate of about a centimeter per hour. However, when auxin is transported through active transport, it's much faster, about 10 times as fast, meaning it can move 10 centimeters per hour, and this is advantageous to the plant. We see that here. We see our auxin uh, moving down here through the process of active transport, you know, moving those proteins uh, embedded in the cell wall through the cell membrane here. And it's using ATP, so it is an energy investment for the plant, but this is advantageous because it's able to get that auxin throughout its system much faster. It's kind of the tortoise and the hare example here. Diffusion would be the tortoise, and active transport would be the hare in this case. So what's auxin do? Well, it's got a couple functions. It has uh, some secondary actions. One is root initiation. Another is vascular tissue de differentiation. Three is tropic response. Four is apical dominance, and five is the development of axillary buds, flowers, and fruits. And I'm going to talk to each about these in a little bit more detail. This is, again, the um, hormone here, auxin, that we're going to be talking about. So starting with promoting rooting. Well, as we see here, here's an example of some cuttings taken with no auxin applied, and you can see the root development on them is quite poor. When auxin is applied, though, we see a much more advantageous root formation. We see here also a comparison of different parts per million of a particular auxin. At zero, we see hardly any root formation, and as we increase our auxin levels, we see an increase in the rooting percentage in total. Now, IBA is a type of auxin, and we're seeing here the same kind of increase in rooting from initially no auxin added. However, what's interesting here is that 2 grams per liter, we see more roots than at 16 grams per liter. So as it kind of shows here is our rooting uh, increases to a certain point and then plateaus. It can even, if we increase auxin concentrations too much, it can actually cause a slight decrease in our rooting that we see here. So more is not better in auxins, but definitely some is better than none as far as increasing our rooting. There's many products uh, that are used to promote these lateral buds uh, of roots, I should say, to form. Uh, and we notice here that hormidin is a very common Hormidin 1, 2, and 3 refer to different concentrations. Clonex is another um, form of an IBA here that you can apply to plants to increase the rooting. Now with both of these, um, auxins in general might be a little unstable. It's good to keep the, your, those products stored in the fridge um, at cool temperatures to make the auxin last as long as possible, so it should be as effective. Now, auxin plays a role in differentiation of vascular tissue. Well, if there's a wound site, Auxin will be involved here to differentiate tissue to repair a vascular system. We kind of see here a little bit, at least highlighted, uh, the vascular system. Remember our xylem and our phloem, and auxin plays a role in cells differentiating into those particular vascular tissues. This one here. So we notice that auxin is involved with tropic responses. And tropism refers to growth in response to a stimulus. There's light in the sense of sunlight, water, where the waters might be located, roots want to maybe go towards that, and gravity. This is how roots know to go down and shoots know to come up. So we see here's our light response here. Well, what's important here in the light response, we see in this case these two plants bending towards the light. Now, while this does occur, this occurs because of auxin. So we see here in the first image here, the light is right above the plant, and here's our auxin concentration, it's pretty even. However, now is that light source is a little bit more to the side here. Notice our plant kind of starting to bend over towards the light. And what's happening in order for the plant to bend like that, the cells on one side need to basically get bigger. So auxin concentrations increase, causing these cells to get larger, and these elongation of cells cause the plant to bend. Because you have basically the same area on each side. Well, if one side gets longer, we're noticing that that side that's going to get longer is going to start to push over and bend towards the light. You could think of this if you're running around a um, track. Right? The, on the outer 
um, circle is a little longer distance than on the inner circle. So here, with this elongation of cells, this is a little bit longer, and it's going to cause the plant to bend towards the light, and that's what you see here. So while we see the plant bending towards the light, that's actually because of the hormone auxin. Promotes apical dominance. Apical dominance is an inhibitory influence on the apical bud upon lateral buds. So what does this mean? Well, first, our apical bud is at the top. The lateral buds are on the side. So a plant that has strong apical dominance would be example here. It's a strong triangle kind of shape, um, strong kind of sense of that central bud there. Weak apical dominance is this kind of weeping tree, where we don't see a point, we don't see a point, don't see kind of the middle part. Uh, doesn't have that nice symmetrical shape here, very weak apical dominance. This is also involved in poinsettia plants. If you look very carefully at a poinsettia, that's a large bush-like form that looks more like this, um, you'll notice in the center there's pinch points. These apical dominance, these leading shoots have been pinched, and that is causing this lateral bud formation to occur. We see that here also. So this Inhibitory influence on the apical bud upon lateral buds. Well, when we have a normally growing plant here, uh, that actively growing bud tip has a lot of auxin in it. That shoot tip is a source of auxin. That inhibits lateral buds from forming. So here's our developing buds, and they're kind of kept in that kind of slow development, dormant-like state. However, when we pinch the top of that, we're removing the auxin, and now with the reduced amount of auxin, there's no more suppression to those lateral buds, and we see these lateral buds being growing at a much greater rate than they are here. Evident here, we see our auxiliary buds. If we pinch that top portion off, these will be encouraged to grow out. However, if we pinch the top off, we notice the lateral buds grow. But when we pinch the top off, if we add um, auxin, supplemental auxin, we notice that those lateral buds never develop. This is a way to prove that auxin is the one suppressing lateral bud formation. So this is important if a plant naturally breaks the tip off because of wind or um, animals come along and eat it, that's going to remove the auxin and that's going to cause these lateral buds to sprout. However, under normal conditions, the plant doesn't want to compete with all these leaves, so it's just going to maintain that central shoot. Auxin promotes fruit development. So as seeds mature, they release auxin to the surrounding parts which develop into fruit that covers the seeds. So here are normal fruit, uh, and we see little seeds here. Now if we take out those seeds, we notice that the strawberry here doesn't grow nearly as good. Now if we take the little seeds off and we spray it with auxins, we notice we get somewhat of a return to normal. Not quite 100% because it's interacting with other hormones, but we see a much closer resemblance of the normal fruit than if we just take the seeds off, eliminating the auxin from developing. This here, evidence of the role of auxin formation of fruit and structures with similar functions. Again, here's our normal strawberry. Here's if we take all the seeds away. And this um, trial run is very interesting. This happens if we take a band of those seeds off, just a central kind of equator point. We notice the fruit below that point does not develop normally, but the fruit above that does. So without seed formation, fruits do not develop. Developing seeds are a source of auxin. So this just gives a little bit of an example showing you normal conditions and how the influence or dependence on fruit development that auxin plays. Lastly, uh, auxins or synthetic auxins are actually a weed killer. So while auxin as a plant hormone can help plants develop, synthetic auxins have a way of potentially eliminating plants from growing. So as many synthetic auxins are used as selective weed killers or herbicides. This one called 2,4-D is used to destroy broadleaf weeds. It does not affect mature monocots, causes plants to grow itself to death. Basically, it grows so fast that it can't support itself and it actually will kill itself. More readily absorbed in broadleaf plants. So on certain weed killers, you may see them advertised as um, kills weeds but not the grass. It's because it's got 2,4-D. It's a type of synthetic auxin, and it's a selective broadleaf weed control. Selective in the sense that it's going to target mainly dicots, where monocots will not be as affected by this, especially if they're mature. Hopefully that was helpful to help explain a little bit of the hormone auxin and how it can influence plant growth.